The Volcani Center, located in Bet Dagan, near Tel Aviv, Israel, is specialized in agricultural research. It is named after its founder, an agronomist, and was established in 1921. It is made up of six institutes, plant sciences, animal science, plant protection, soil science, water and environment, agricultural and post-harvest engineering, and food sciences. The Volcani Center is the research arm of uh, the Ministry of Agriculture and we have uh, three campuses. We have a campus here uh, in Rishon Lezion and two other campuses, uh, one in the north uh, called Neveyar and one in the south called Gilat. The one in the north focuses on sustainable agriculture and health food and the one in the south focuses on the on agriculture at the edge of the, of the desert. The Volcani Center researches all topics in agriculture and specializes in arid zones. This allows Israel, a country with scarce resources, to reach the highest levels of agricultural production in the world. As a governmental research institute, we obviously focus on issues that are important for the Israeli agriculture. And those are being competitive in um, world markets by development of unique and special varieties of fruit, vegetable, cereals, herbs, etc. On trying to use as efficiently as possible our very limited water resources to try, uh, to try and preserve the land. Israel is a very small country. 20,000 square kilometers, we don't have much land and we need to use the land that is possible to uh, be used for crop growth as efficiently as possible and trying to reduce uh, manpower use and, uh, and save on manpower cost. In terms of global issues, which are also uh, relevant to Israel, we are trying to focus on uh, development of varieties that can withstand high temperatures with the global heating. We are trying to develop um, methods that will keep our food as safe as possible by reducing the use of toxic pesticides. We are trying to find methods to preserve food losses and increase the supply of food by trying to understand what causes food rotting and trying to develop different approaches by packaging, by storage and by additional novel nanotechnological approaches to preserve food um, and of course to use all these approaches while keeping the environment safe. It is extremely important for this center to invest resources in agricultural research. The importance of research has grown over the years as new problems arise every day creating needs that require new technologies in order to face these productive challenges. Not to stick only to academic issues, but also to be connected with the field, with the extension services, with the farmers, to be aware of their problems, to use the plots for experimental um, uh, um, uh, uh, settings, etc. Et now let's get to know some of the projects that are being carried out in the different institutes of the Volcani Center. I'm working on uh, different aspects of flowering. And now I, I will represent a project that are uh, done in the institute. 
So we are trying to deal with challenges in the agriculture, uh, both by conventional breeding, uh, uh, basic research, and uh, uh, also biotechnology approaches. So for example, you can see here a interspecific cross between different varieties of cut flowers that created the a vigor of the progeny and you can see that we have different uh, uh, colors and different shapes and sizes of the progeny. Uh, additional uh, breeding that we did in the institute is creating uh, tomato varieties with, that accumulate high levels of pigments. tomatoes are really special because the, the pigments are also serve as antioxidants which are really important for our nutrition. So you can see like we created the black tomatoes. In addition we are trying to deal with the environmental stresses and you can see that in hot condition you get low quality peppers because of scratches on the skin and after a, a tedious breeding program we created the uh, varieties of peppers that are resistant to uh, heat stress. In addition, uh, we are trying to overcome propagation is issues. For example, in, in trees, there is a problem to propagate them vegetatively uh, using a cutting. Trying different uh, chemical conjugates, we can increase the propagation efficiency uh, through cuttings, for example, for different trees like uh, pecan, eucalyptus, uh, uh, apple, and uh, avocado. And also, we can use different uh, approaches like uh, uh, using tissue culture also to overcome this kind of uh, problems. Until recently, garlic was sterile and its vegetative propagation can leave it exposed to viruses. Recently, a breeding project was able to reproduce garlic through seeds. My department, the second department, deals with soil chemistry, soil microbiology, plant nutrition. So this is our institute. All together, we are now 22 researchers Together with technicians, students, uh, we have uh, something like 60 to 70 uh, workers. So here there is a small exhibition of the projects we do in the institute. For example, there's one group who deals with the production and the application of biochar. What is biochar? Biochar is the product of anoxic combustion of any kind of agricultural waste. The process is called pyrolysis. Pyrolysis is combustion without oxygen at very high temperature, 400 to 500 degrees Celsius without oxygen. So you get two products. You get this liquid, it's called wood vinegar, and you get the biochar. So this is a charcoal. It's, it, it's, it can still be used as fuel. It still has some energy. It can be used as an energy fuel, but we don't deal with its energy as a fuel. We deal with its incorporating, incorporation into the soil. Okay? Now, incorporating this biochar into the soil as environmental benefits and agricultural benefits. Quería hacerles una recorrida acerca de algunos eh, ensayos que se están llevando a cabo eh, que pueden llegar a demostrar cuál es el, eh, el trabajo de nuestro departamento. Fundamentalmente la, el objetivo nuestro es aumentar la vida útil del producto a través de mantener la calidad luego de la cosecha, ya sea tanto de los vegetales como de las frutas.
aquí tenemos eh, pimiento morrón. Eh, tenemos, como pueden observar, este es el control. A cabo de tres semanas tenemos problemas fundamentalmente eh, fitopatológicos, de desarrollo de enfermedades eh, y por otro lado también pérdida de peso. Nosotros en nuestro departamento hemos desarrollado un equipo que por ahí podrían observar en la pantalla, es un equipo que mmm, cepilla el producto con agua caliente. El pimiento morrón es ingresado al equipo y recibe, como pueden ver a través de las boquillas, agua a 55 grados durante 15 segundos. Eso, por un lado, disminuye la carga del polvo presente en la zona del pedúnculo, baja la carga microbiana y, por otro lado, nos permite eh, alargar la vida del producto por encima de los de las tres semanas, que es el periodo que eh, abarca el transporte marítimo de Israel a Estados Unidos. Podemos tener eh, aquí eh, datos acerca de otro ensayo donde nosotros utilizamos ceras naturales. Estamos tratando de buscar alternativas al uso de ceras eh, convencionales. En este caso eh, tenemos eh, mandarina, en el cual nosotros utilizamos ceras comestibles. En este caso es a base de gelatinas. In the Volcani Center, there is also a bank in charge of collecting and preserving the genetic resources of Israel. We do that both as the wild species, but also the land races, the ancestors or the original of the crops as we know them today. So you can see here some of our jars, how we store our seed collection in the gene bank. And what you can see here is different uh, varieties of wheat. You know, wheat is one of Israel's uh, very famous, very uh, um, main crop. It was domesticated here in our area uh, hundreds of years ago, thousands of years ago, and was domesticated. So we have here the wild species, the wild emmer wheat, and all the varieties that were domesticated ever since. The ancient one, the traditional one, the land races, and also we have here two varieties, which are modern varieties bred here at the Volcani Center. We use the ancient, the wild, and the land races with for two main purposes. The first one is as a pool of traits, pool of genes that can help us improve the modern varieties of wheat that we have today. Because this wheat was domesticated and grown here in Israel, it contains very special traits, traits such as resistant to the high temperature or to the low precipitation. Using these traits, using these genes to improve our wit will help us provide food for the world today in the global warming. The other aspect of these uh, seeds is what you can see over here in the breads. And those breads are baked using this traditional and ancient wheat. We have here today in Israel, but also all over the world, a movement of culinary movement of people that want to eat a food which is more traditional, using traditional techniques, also using the raw material of the food. So eating the old and ancient uh, wheat gives us some different tastes, some claim even different uh, uh, health, uh, um, health issues and uh, more vitamins, more nutrients, 
Uh, and here at the Gin Bank, we provide the seats for both the culinary level, but also and most importantly, to have the traits for improving uh, our crops. In order to provide the food that is currently demanded by the world population, it is necessary to cultivate the most productive species, that is, modern ones. Nuestro departamento tiene dos objetivos principales, que uno es eh, reducir la cantidad de agroquímicos que se usan para controlar las enfermedades. Eh, y el otro es tratar de, de, de encontrar nuevas variedades que sean resistentes a enfermedades o tolerantes. Principalmente existe en el cultivo de tomate el problema es con el tobamovirus. Como pueden ver en estos tomates, la calidad no es buena porque está afectada por, eh, por estos virus. Eh, hay también virus en eh, las plantas de pimiento y también en eh, pepino. Para reducir esta, estos problemas se usan eh, plantas de tomates injertadas y también plantas de, eh, eh, de sandía injertadas, que esto, ustedes pueden ver acá. dealing with geoinformatic and remote sensing and basically we're developing different systems for monitoring the landscape based on sensors that are on uh, aircraft, satellites, sensors on the ground to monitor the agricultural system. And in here it's a specific, uh, it's a specific uh, study that we're doing with a unique satellite. The name of the satellite is Venus. The other project that we've got is a project that we're working on uh, uh, monitoring quality and quantity of forage. Uh, and it, it's a very important aspect in Israel because we need to monitor the grazing system that we are working. We've got a large area that uh, we've got the animals that graze over there, goats, cows, etc. First of all, forest, and you can see it all over the world, we've got a, a large-scale mortality of forest. We've got a reduction in the area of forest due to deforestation, degradation, etc. And of course, monitoring those forests and understanding how those forests can cope with drought conditions is very important. And this is what we're doing. We're developing a way to monitor those systems, of course, to improve human well-being and to develop a much more smart and precise agriculture. This is a, the precision agriculture. Mm -hmm.